Hey, can you make this design pop a bit more? Honestly, I feel like it's really good, but I just think it's missing something. This is pretty good so far. Oof. That one hurts. So what I wanna share is two of my favorite techniques that I use personally when navigating those really, really annoying comments. All in all, more times than not, they're actually correct. But realistically, probably just do not understand the terminology in which we need to do the make it pop. So if you ever heard comments like those or similar, what it means in our professional world is the design needs a little bit more attention. To what? Detail. You know what else can help you with the detail, right? You know it's coming. The Everything Pack, if you guys have yet to check it out, it's the first link in the description down below and it's also on sale right now for Labor Day weekend. So if you guys got it, W. If you guys didn't get it, you're still a W, but you can get it like right now for like really cheap. But if you're watching after the video, it's still incredibly worth it. It has all my products in one single purchase. And then afterwards, forever, for the rest of your life, all new self buy products that I choose to bring out. So that's packs, assets, resources. You get it for free. And of course, access to our exclusive Discord server. But yeah, if you guys want to get it, I would get it really, really soon. But let's hop into the video. So uh, let me go ahead and start with my favorite ways to add highlights to objects or photos that just helps make the photo or object. No, that was cringe. Oh my, oh, that was, oh. So in three very simple steps, you can go from having very flat concepts to actually having a really cool rim light effect. First, let's start with clip masking a new layer to your object layer. With this layer, choose your highlight color and do not be afraid to actually choose a color that is genuinely bright. After, take a 30% hardness brush. However, with this brush, use the edge of the brush to add your first rim light that acts as your first contact light. Try not to actually bleed too much of the brush on the overall face or the object, otherwise it can look pretty bad. So probably no more than a few centimeters from the actual edge. Next, you wanna make a new layer and choose a slightly darker version of your previous color. When you do try to find that darker color though, try to use the color slider on the right and don't try to just only use the value box to make a darker tone. But with this color, with a zero to 10% hardness brush, also change the opacity around 60%, use the edge of a fairly large brush radius and allow it to bleed onto the object pretty far. Don't use too small of a brush where you'll have to lay the actual majority of the brush to far on top of the object, make the brush bigger and only use the edge of it. What you'll notice is the new layer you made is just see-through enough below the first layer and you can start to actually see the lightning technique come to play. Where it's more visibly bright at the edge of the object, then more light bleeds on later. And if you don't see it enough, I would end up lowering the opacity of the overall layer. Then the last part that helps tie everything together, on another layer, choose another slightly darker color than the previous one, but this time change the blend mode of the new layer to linear dodge add. Then with a big brush, edge the brush, click around the edge to grab that full light effect. It should bring up all the lighting you did before and help us stand out a lot more. And if you ever wanna like kind of fine tune this light here, you can use a shortcut control U for the hue, saturation, luminance, and adjustments. And when the actual table pops up, you wanna take your lightness and just throw it down just a tiny bit and then move your actual hue slider till you find a color that you really enjoy and you can kind of be okay with. But then there you go. You just made your object or face or photo pop out just way more. And realistically, you can use this in a lot of cool products when it comes to manipulation as well. I literally just use it on my previous thumbnail. Just, just saying. Are you interested in how to make your overall photos pop? Like I'm talking about those really good photos you see, you just, you just know it was edited, but then how do they do it? So here's my genuine routine that I use when I wanna actually really try. So stick with me, you'll learn a lot, but it is long. So what you always wanna do is start off with taking your photo, making it to a smart object, and heading over to filter, camera raw filter. Here is when you actually wanna focus on getting that natural contrast. So lowering the blacks a bit can help pretty much immediately with that. Then maybe increasing the shadows to get a bit more things like hair or patterns in the clothes to show more. And if things are just a little bit too bright for the overall atmosphere, you can also lower the highlights. Then you can adjust your texture and clarity to your liking, anywhere between like five and 40 or 50 for both of them. Maybe also apply a little bit of sharpening as well in the detail section. Then always check the before and after, or you can do it while you're also making the adjustments by selecting this box right here. Just to be sure that you're actually content, then you can exit. Now what I actually want you to do is make a duplicate of your photo and rasterize the image. Then choose the dodge tool and where the highlights are on your photo, paint it with a 10% brush. No more, you hear me? No more than two to three passes with that brush. So on 10%, you go once, 
you go twice, maybe the third time, you go anymore, you're making, no, no. Then once you're done with the dodge tool, I want you to switch to the burn tool and shade the shadows of your photo with a 10% brush, making sure that the range up top is set to shadow. Again, do not pass over two to three times. That was one, two to three, but you're still not done. The next step is to select your photo and at the top, choose select and pick color range. Here, I want you to actually change your mode to highlight and lower your fuzziness from anywhere between five and 20% and change your range from anywhere between 220 and 249. Press OK, and then with this selection, choose Levels. And then take the middle right anchor and push it towards the middle just a tad so you find something that you like. And also brings out the highlights of only the direct light. Then hold Control and select the thumbnail of the Levels layer to grab the same exact highlight selection and move over to Adjustments and choose Vibrance. Here you want to increase your vibrance from anywhere between 40 to 100%, depending on how washed out the lights may have been to add more skin color back in. You might also have to actually adjust the saturation as well. Now you want to repeat the same exact routine, however, with shadows for your color range, making sure that when the table pops up once again, you want to change your mode this time to shadows. You can keep the same settings for your fuzziness and range that we just did for our highlights, by the way, then press OK. And then with this selection, we want to choose levels for our adjustments. But this time we want to focus on the bottom gradient first, pushing that last anchor on the right towards the middle to bring the actual shadows in again. Then in the middle box, the middle anchor, slightly move it two ticks to the right to make it pop even more. Then, I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm really not kidding, but this is the tech, so stick with me. Go to your adjustments and choose the hue and saturation and purposely turn up the lightness all the way to 90 or so so that you can see it. Select the layer mask and invert it with control I to turn off the adjustment. Then with a white brush, select on the layer mask, zoom in onto the eyes and paint on the white of the eyes. Once you've done that, you can turn your lightness back down all the way to zero for now. Take your saturation and put it anywhere from negative 90 to negative 100. Then increase your lightness so you get a more natural eye look, but clears up the eye so it feels more animated and visible. And now you're finally done with the photo correction. Now, just keep in mind, okay, that all these settings that I did show on today's video are definitely case by case or photo by photo, and you're gonna have to make some adjustments along the way. However, though, those are the genuine steps a lot of professional designers in worlds of sports, esports, or just like photo retouching for designs anywhere kind of use. But like, of course, they can either take or even implement even more of those same settings just to get more of the desired looks. And just in case you were going to ask yourself or even ask me, why don't you just do this all in camera all filter? It's a very unique look because we did actually end up painting with the dodge and burn tool originally. So it actually looks a lot cooler and just a little bit more special. But we also did it manually so that we can really get and achieve what we really want to have. I, I promise you, okay, if you're a beginner, you're, you're lucky. I didn't figure this out till like like six years deep. So if you're seeing this like year one, year two, pat yourself in the back, you're lucky, you're happy, you should be incredibly happy because your design is just gonna like go from here to maybe like, like here, candidly, like realistic, not up here, just saying. But with that being said, Seso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. And if you guys haven't already, the Everything Pack is currently on sale for Labor Day weekend. And if you guys aren't watching it after the sale, if you're watching after the sale, it's still incredibly worth it. Check it up, check it out. It's over here in the panels or like down the first link in the description down below as always. But yeah, that's what I got. Peace.